All right, so we are covering Unit 2, Lesson 6 today, using equations to solve problems. We've used tables, and then we use those tables to make equations. And now we're going to show how you can use that equation to answer some questions. So our learning goal is let's use equations to solve problems that involve proportional relationships. Well, we're going to start out with a little number talk, um, some mental math, quotients with decimal points. And we are being asked to, without a calculator, order the quotients of these expressions from least to greatest. So what I'd like you to do is, um, let's call this A, this B, this C, and this D. And I want you to stop the video and I want you to put them in order. All right, so the correct order should be B, then D, then C, and then A. So my thought process, and yours may have been different, and as long as it's mathematically sound, that's fine, is this right here, this divisor, that's what this is called, the number that you divide by, this divisor is the smallest divisor of all four of them. So therefore, it is going to have the largest number as an answer, because we are taking, we're dividing this 42 and 6 tenths into itty bitty little pieces. So there's going to be more of those little itty bitty pieces. So this is the smallest divisor. So therefore it is the biggest, the greatest. Okay. Then the next smallest is this one. So that's why I put that one here. Well now we're looking at B and D and we have to decide which one's going to be the smallest. Well, this is taking 42 and 6 tenths and dividing it by 70. And this is taking 426 and dividing it by 70. So this one starts out smaller, so therefore it is going to be the least. All right, then it says place the decimal point in the appropriate location in the quotient. So if we have 42 and 6 tenths divided by 7, I'm thinking to myself, 42, I'm just going to drop this, I'm thinking 42 divided by 7 is going to be 6. So therefore, without even using a calculator, I am going to be able to answer that question right there. Then it says, use this answer to find the quotient of one of the previous expressions. So I'm going to go ahead and let you do that. And then you can take your calculator and see if you got the right answer. All right, okay. So our first activity here is concert ticket sales. And I would imagine some of you have been to concerts before. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do is to go to country music concerts. Um, but unfortunately, this past summer, we haven't been able to do that. Hopefully we can get back to that. So our problem is a performer expects to sell 5,000 tickets for an upcoming concert. They want to make a total of $311,000 in sales from these tickets. So assuming that all the tickets have the same price, what is the price for one ticket? So it sounds like they're wanting us to find the unit rate, and we know that also as the COP. So could I make a table? Sure I could. So I'm going to think about what do I want to go to one? Well, I want the cost of one ticket. So that's going to go in my X column. Money's going to go in my Y column. I want to know, let's see, I know that 5,000 tickets, whoops, let's try that again, Miss Lynn. 5,000 tickets, they make $311,000. And I wanna know how much does one ticket cost? Well, I can either go this way, which be the easiest thing is divide by 5,000, or I can come over here and do my Y over X, which is gonna be the same thing, divided by 5,000. When I do that, I get $62.20. Now my calculator is gonna say 62.2, but we want to know what is the price, 
and money always goes to the hundredths place. So the cost of one ticket is $62.20. Okay, and that is our COP. So let me ask you, could we write an equation that goes with that? What would the equation be? Well, Y is our money. So we could say, um, what do we want to call it, P? Or let's call it M for money. Money equals 62.2 is our COP times the number of tickets, and we'll call that T, where M is money. <clears throat> Money made, maybe we should have called it profit. And T is number of tickets. Now, why did I bother to make an equation? Well, let's go over here and look. How much will they make if they make 7,000, if they sell 7,000 tickets? Well, I could have created, I could have gone back to my table over here and I could have put 7,000 right here, multiplied by the 6250 or 6220 and gotten that. Could I just use my equation? So the money earned equals 62.2 times the number of tickets sold. Well, I'm selling 7,000 tickets. So let's just plug that in. M equals 62.2 times 7,000 and that's going to end up giving me M equals 435,400 when I plug it into my handy dandy calculator. So my answer will be they will make $435,400 dollars they sell 7,000 tickets. How much will they make if they sell 10,000 tickets, 50,000 tickets, 120,000 tickets, a million tickets, X tickets? Well, can we just keep using our equation over and over again? We're going to go back to this equation. So we're going to say M equals 62.2 times 10,000. We're going to say M equals 62.2 times 50,000. Then we're going to do it times 120,000. And then we're going to do it times a million. And I'm going to run out of room. Okay, whoops, I left out a zero. Let's put another zero in there. Okay, and then X, we're just going to leave it. So M equals 62.2. Now, instead of saying times a, thou a million, 120,000, I'm going to say times X. So any value, we would just multiply it. All right, so let's go in and figure out how much money they would make. So if I put it in my handy-dandy calculator, I'm going to get $622,000 here. I'm going to get $3,110,000 here. I'm going to get, let's see, 120,000 tickets is going to give me $7,464,000. And if a million people showed up, whoa, I'm going to make $62,200,000. Okay, I don't even think Luke Bryan could get it. A well, I don't even know where you would put a million people at a concert. Maybe Luke Bryan could get a million people, but 50,000 most definitely. Most country artists can get 50,000. All right. If they make 
$379,420, how many tickets have they sold? Well, can we use our same equation? M equals 62.2T. Now, this is money this time, so that's how much they make. So I'm gonna substitute this in right here because this is M, so it got substituted, equals 62.2T. Well, now this is an equation, and we know how to solve this. What's attached to the T? 62.2, how is it attached? Multiplication, so we are going to divide both sides by 62.2. Whoops. And that is going to give us that T equals the number of tickets is 6,100. So our answer would be, let's see, they sold 6,100 tickets. All right, how many tickets will they sell to make $5 million? Well, we're gonna do the same thing, M equals 62.2t. We're using that equation again. Do we know the money or do we know the ticket number? Well, we know the money again. So we're gonna put five million equals 62.2t. What's attached to the t? 62.2. It's attached by multiplication. We're going to divide to undo it. So that's going to give us T equals, now if when you do it in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal and you can't sell part of a ticket. So we're gonna say approximately 80,386. Helps if you write the right thing. So they sold 80,000 386 tickets. All right, now you probably could have done that without the equation, but do you see how the equation can help us? It tells us whether we're multiplying or dividing, so we don't have to really think about it. We just have to do what the equation tells us to do. All right, this problem is a little more complicated because this adds in a third issue going on here. So we have aluminum cans can be recycled instead of being thrown in the garbage. The weight of 10 aluminum cans is 16 hundredths of a kilogram. The aluminum in 10 cans that are recycled has a value of 14 cents. If a family threw away two and four tenths kilograms of aluminum in a month, how many cans did they throw away? And they want us to show our thinking. All right, my thought process was, let's find out the unit rate, the COP. So we're talking the weight. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna look at this part of the things they gave us. So I have, and you know I like tables. So I have, let's see, I wanna find for one can. So I have the number of cans, I'm gonna put in my X column and then the weight in kilograms is gonna be in this column. So this is gonna be my C, and this is gonna be my W. Okay, and like always, this is X, this is Y. So I know that 10 cans weighs 16 hundredths of a kilogram. So if I wanna find the COP, if I wanna find one, I can do Y over X, and that's gonna give me 0 0.16 divided by 10. So when I slide that over, I get one is going to be 16 thousandths of a kilogram. All right, so can I write an equation for that? Sure I can. W equals, what was my COP? 0 0.016, remember your COP occurs when X is one or with whatever you get with y over x, and that is multiplied by the number of cans. So we're gonna call that c. So w is the weight, and c is number of cans. 
You always have to tell me what the variable represents. All right, so now I can come over here and use my equation, W equals 0 0.016 or 16 thousandths C. If a family threw away 2.4 or 2 and 4 tenths kilograms, well, this is my W, correct? Do we agree? All right, so I'm going to plug that in. So 2.4 kilograms equals 0.016 C. What's attached to the C? 16 thousandths. I'm going to divide both sides by 16 thousandths. And that's going to give me C equals 150. Now what does that 150 mean? How many cans did they throw away? They threw away 150 cans. So there's using the equation. Could I have come over here and used the table? I certainly could have. I could have put 2.4 right here, used my COP to go this way, and come up with the same answer. If you are more comfortable with the table, I'm not going to tell you you have to use the equation. If you are comfortable with the equation, I'm not going to tell you you have to use the table. Use what you're comfortable with. All right, what would be the recycled value of those same cans? All right, so this is all about weight. Well, now I'm d dealing with this part of the problem. So I'm gonna do the same thing, number of cans, and this time it's money, the value. I'm gonna make myself another table. Let me take that out. So this is going to be C, and we're going to call this our R for recycle value. All right, so the number of cans, 10 cans, gets them 14 cents. 0.14. Okay, I want to know how much do they make per can. I can either do the Y over X which would be 0 0.14 divided by 10. Or I can think of going down this way, dividing by 10, the same thing. So my answer ends up being 14 thousandths. Okay, my equation, remember the equation is in the form of y equals kx, so r equals, my constant is 14 thousandths times my x, which is C, where R is the money earned, the recycle value, and C is the number of cans. Okay, so I'm going to use my equation. Could I use the table? I certainly could. We have 2.4 kilograms, but we know that that is 150 cans. So we can put 150 here, or we can come to our equation, recycle value equals 0 0.014 times the number of cans, and the number of cans would be 150. We're going to multiply, and that would give us a grand total of 2.1. So let's see, the value is Two dollars and ten cents for those 150 cans. All right. So if you want to use the table, you'd look at this and you'd multiply one by 150. So you're going to multiply this by 150 to get that, or you can think of the COP times 150, or you can come over here and use the equation. If you like the table, use the table. If you like the equation, use the equation. All right. Now they want us to write an equation to represent the number of cans for their weight. Hmm. Well, we came up with, we had W equals 0 0.016C. But they want C first. So let's think about how we're going to do that. 
Well, this is really 16 over 1,000, right? Okay, and we know that if we are writing the equation the other way, we use the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of 16 thousandths? That would be 1,000 over 16. So if you take 1,000 divided by 16, that is going to give us 62.5. So this equation would be C equals 62.5 W. Okay? Write an equation to represent the recycled value R of cans. So we want something in the terms of R equals something times C. Well, let's go back and look and see what we got over here. Did we already have that? Oh, we did. That was what we started out with. So we can just copy that down. We already found that. So that was 14 thousandths. Now, they want us to write an equation to represent the R of W. So we want something that says R equals something times W. So now we're comparing the weight and the cans. So this gets a little bit more complicated. So we need to figure out one kilogram is how many cans. Oh, we did that. One kilogram right here equals 62.5 cans. We found that. The number of cans equals 62.5 times the, the weight. Okay, so we know that. So if it weighs one kilogram, we have 62.5 cans. All right, so we're going to go with this R equals 0.014 C. And I'm going to plug in, that's the number of cans, 0.014 times the 62.5. I know I've just lost you, didn't I? All right, this C represents the number of cans. We want to find the amount of money they make per kilogram. So if one kilogram is that many cans, I'm going to multiply our how much money we make per can times 62.5. All right, because we're doing it per kilogram now, not per can. All right, so when I multiply that together, I get my value is R equals 0 0.875. So this is my profit or what I make for one kilogram of cans. This right here is what I make per can, per kilogram of cans. So my equation, R equals something W, is going to be, there's my COP, so it would be 0 0.875. All right. The way, there's another way to do it with the, um, the table. And to me, this was even more confusing but it is what we did. We figured out 10, grand, 10 cans, 16 hundredths. We figured out the recycle value. We were told the recycle value was 14 cents. This is everything that we were given, this row right here. Then we figured out 150 cans weighed 2.4 kilograms. That was the first question. And we figured out the second question, we earned $2.10. Then we came down here and we found the unit rate. Well, one can weighs 16 thousandths of a kilogram and makes um, $0.014. Then we came over here and we said, okay, we've got one kilogram gives us 62.5 cans. So W would give us 62.5 and the same thing continues down here. An unknown number of cans, we would multiply it by 0 0.014, which is where we got that equation. One kilogram represents this much money, the $0.87, the 87 cents right here that we found. 
and then the W would be the this right here. So that's using the table. To me, it made more sense using the equations. But if you want to um, ponder this table and see if it makes sense to you, um, I'll leave it right here so you can see it. Screenshot it and ponder it for a little while and see if you can figure out where everything came from because it's the same thing that I did with the equations. To me, the equation made more sense. All right, so lesson summary. Remember, there is a proportional relationship between two quantities if they can be written in the form of y equals k t kx. And sometimes writing that equation is the easiest way to solve the problem. For me, the um, aluminum cans, I could have only done that with the equations. The ticket one, I could have gone either way. All right, so if you read through this problem, this is another example. Um, it's saying, let's see, for example, we know that Denali is the highest mountain peak in North America, is 20,300 feet above sea level. How many miles is that? Well, we know that there are 5,280 feet in a mile. So this relationship would be F equals 5,280 meters, where F represents the distance measured in feet, and M is the same distance in miles. Since we know that Denali is 20,310 feet above sea level, this is the feet, so I'm going to substitute it for the F into the equation. So M, the miles, is going to be approximately 3.85 miles. So that's using the equation. You just gotta figure out what did they give you, what letter is that, plug it in, and then solve it like an equation. All right, hope you enjoyed today's lesson and didn't get too tied up with the um, aluminum cans. Maybe go back and watch it again and see if it starts to click in your head. It took me a little while. I will be honest with you, it probably took me going through it three times before I actually understood it. And that's okay. Math is not about speed. It's about understanding. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you on Zoom.